Hey everybody, good morning. It's actually um, 10 to 6 a.m. And I've actually been pretty much awa um, uh, awake all night. I went to go to bed, couldn't sleep, got up. My uh, honey got up at uh, 4 and I was still up. And then I went to go lay down and I ended up getting back up. So I thought, you know what, I think that I'll, um, I'll just make this video. It's a quiet quiet time of the day so you will have seen the uh, sketches that I made and then uploaded the um, the pencil one as a JPEG and then I outlined another one in, in bold markers so that that could be used for you know coloring with markers or pencil crayons or whatever I had actually dripped some ink over top of this I had it laying on here when I was painting but anyway I made uh, a couple of them I transferred them onto water, 140 pound watercolor paper. I have a little pad, um, and it's a very inexpensive little pad I got at Michael's, the artist level, level two, um, 140 pound watercolor paper. It's really quite affordable and uh, it's pretty easy, and especially when you're doing this sort of thing. Um, so anyway, this is. Uh, I just thought that maybe we could do another paint along. Uh, the children, they can paint this whatever they want. So I am going to do one with watercolor today. And I'm going to use my metallic paints for it. But you know what was really funny is how this idea came about. Is I was actually doing some, some doodling in the sense. Or just some loose sketching. Trying to figure out what I wanted to paint. Because there's some other things I want to get done too. Um, however, I just thought, well, I, I really wanted to just kind of sit down and do some doodling or do some free sketching. And these actually started out as like trees, so this isn't the original. But I sort of was just kind of drawing like funky trees, like really, really abstract. I was kind of thinking Dr. Seussy, you know. I love the Dr. Seuss shapes. Um, just very weird and alien and organic. Anyway, it started out as this, and then at some point I looked at it, and I, I don't know why giraffe came to my head, but anyway, it ended up morphing into this. And then I thought, well, this would be really good if I made it a little simpler with simpler lines, and it would be a fun little picture that um, kids could color or use their imagination. So I took, did one. This one here was done with just inks, um, water-soluble inks that I have this set at home and they this is Inktense Blocks. I also have pencils too but I prefer working with these because they're pretty pretty quick. Oh, I can't get the lid off now. There we go. So that's, that's how I use them too. I never bother to bring them out. Well sometimes I do but very very seldom and I just bring my brush in there. Now the really nice thing about this is they're really quite watery. You can get them fairly thick as you can see. I got some pretty good consistency there. And um, they actually worked pretty good on the watercolor paper. But I wanted to make it really nice and bright, very primary, lots of fun. And then I just went over with my little um, gel pen here and made some little dots. I was actually even thinking I might make some patterns in their little um, patterns on their bodies but it looks like a mama and her little one and of course he took a bite out of the plant over here so anyway so I thought that that would be fun for us to do and so that was that and then I thought well I, I think I might like to do something a little bit different and just use the watercolors but add look yeah some metallics there's another one. Now there's a YouTuber on here. She does. She's very successful. She has quite a lot of people uh, um, that pay f um, and you know like support her through donations on her Patreon site, things like that. So it's really good. I'd love to be able to do that someday. But um, she uses a lot of gold, and she has this pan gold. And I, I mean, I never really thought that much about it. Um, but then I thought, oh, well, maybe I'll order what she's got because I like to work with mica powders and things like that. Well, that's exactly what this is. They're just mica powders. And I have a gazillion of it all down at the studio already, but I have it in its original powder form. And then you, I just add um, gum arabic to it and a little water and voila. This is um, 
I'm not sure what their uh, binder is, but you just add water and then it becomes some, um, it's a watercolor. So um, when I saw hers, I thought, well, let's see if Amazon's got any. She gets hers from a specific um, uh, manufacturer um, that, but anyway, I went on there and I found two sets. This one is the Komorebi. Komorebi. So that's this one right here. It's six shimmering colors. And this is on for 23. And so these are the colors as they're painted out. So that's this one here. This one here. So that is metallic Komorebi. Let me see the box. Komorebi watercolor paint set. And they're just gorgeous. So you can see that there's this this um the you know the, it actually looks better than what the camera's showing there you can see it's got a nice reflective surface this is like a, a deep rose color this is a dark dark this is more of a coppery and of course that's silver and then there's this one here this one is called starry colors and it's kiritaki kiritaki and that's these ones here. This one is a very light uh, pearlescent white, and this is more of a silver. And then you've got your various golds here, as you can see. Very nice. So I thought that would be fun to use these. So I'm going to just spray mist just to get everything wet and ready. But what I will do is I am going to watercolor first and then maybe add these as accents or perhaps even um, throughout the whole thing. Oops. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just spray misting and getting my watercolors wet. I had done this earlier, but then they dried because I got waylaid. You know, I don't know if you guys are easily distracted these days too, but I, I've been watching a lot of YouTube and a lot of, um, you know, news stuff. And actually, you know what I've been doing too? Though? I've been watching a lot of really lovely um, feel good stories. I haven't been watch. I don't watch the news. I think they're terrible. They um, they incite fear mongering and um, you know all kinds of ridiculous. When when we hear that fake news, I really believe that because. They, they just want ratings, so they're going to try and give you the worst of the worst. And that's some rather than, you know, rally together and, and think about ways that we can encourage one another to get through these difficult times. And there are some people who are really having a difficult time with all of this. I personally, I have to admit that um, I was a bit concerned in the beginning but now I see it as a worldwide timeout and it's um, so many people are starting to have a lot of deep reflection and um, you know seeing and, and seeing that it, you know the family and friends and and um, being kind to one another really are what it's all about it's not about trying to get to the top quick um, you know I've been on a hamster wheel for all my life so um, it's almost kind of nice where I don't have to perform or I don't have to I don't have to feel like I have to be on top of my game and productive every single moment and for me it's almost like it's been this wonderful time out for me too where I'm just starting to relax into myself anywho let's get going um, I just thought that you know I love to paint I love to draw I create felted works I love the water media, so it, it's actually quite natural for me to go and use any kind of water, you know, try to be a part of any uh, type of water media. And uh, so even wet felting and felting and that is is always a fun thing. So I'm thinking too that maybe what I'll do is, um, I'm, I'll, you know, do some variegated washes as opposed to doing a solid. And I'm just kind of thinking maybe I might even do um, her, and notice I'm saying her, but because that's exactly how I kind of went about this, but I'm thinking I might like to make her like a red, 
you know, like, um, so this is kind of a strong red here. Um, this is a Daniel Smith. I think this is a rose. This might not be strong enough. And also, too, I just wetted them out, so they're not going to be that soft. So typically what I do is I will re-wet these, and I will have them sit for a bit, and then they have the consistency of um, just like they came out of a tube, right? Nice and soft, and then you'll able, you're able to get a lot of pigment from them. Now, don't be fussy about whatever it is that you've got that you want to paint with. If you want to paint with paint yours, you know, draw, do it in a hard outline, paint with uh, acrylic, whatever it is you want to paint with. If you got coloring, you got student grade. Um, this one's more opaque. I was looking for something that was more, I want, I want to do something that's more transparent. So, but maybe I will have to go. I'd like to do the transparent as a base. So maybe I'll do the, I'm going to do this one. This is the Conacrinone Rose. And this is a Daniel Smith. I'm a, I use a lot of Daniel Smith. Daniel Smith and Windsor Newton are the two that I can rely on. Their colors are very consistent. Okay, so I'm gonna make this very wet. So I'm gonna make, I'm gonna wet this all, except your eyes. So I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna make this whole surface very wet. So obviously, even though I did clean it in the dirty one, there's just a little residue of pink there. So that's why you want to be sure that you really rinse out your... So you can always hold it up to the light too, so you can see how absorbent. See, it's not very wet. Okay, that's how you can see how absorbent your water, your paper, or how uh, wet it is. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna go around the nose holes though, because I don't want to get them. I don't want to get them wet. And if I, you know what? Even if I go over them, I'm gonna make I'll make them dark, so it doesn't matter. So a variegated wash is where you come in with a wet on wet with uh, more than one color. So you're mixing more than one color together. And um, you allow them to blend. You can push it along too. So you'll come in and you just um, you introduce the color, just bring it around. I'm going to flatten this because it's already bubbled a little bit. So I'll just kind of come to this side here. Pretty pink. Clean out that water. Or clean out that brush. It looks a little uh, magenta there, doesn't it? But this is actually the magenta here. So what I want to do is maybe I'll I'll make I'll keep it a nagulus a nagulus, and I will go with the darker. And I will, ooh, that is dark. This one here is that mag um, that magenta, or um, what you call it? It's a deep magenta. So you're gonna just bring it round random. So a lot of times with a variegated, you will you do want to overlap on the previous wash that you put on too, so that encourages some of the blending. And I'm not going to use any opposites. I'm definitely going to use a companion, like so, so um, that they, there's a little bit of color harmony. So this one's more opaque. kind of encourage some of the color to spread now 
it does does depend on the watercolor paper too if it is a poor quality or if the sizing isn't there see now this is puddling here I don't want to puddle so I'm going to lift that out we don't want puddles forming because what happens in the end is that will dry hard like a, a you know like a see I got some puddling here we don't want that drying out so we want to lift that out you can do it with a thirsty brush or a tissue, but doing a thirsty brush is better. So see how it's spreading and we're kind of getting a really nice mottled look. So just pick out any of those puddles and, um, and then you kind of get a nice variegated wash. They all blend in together. So it's still fairly wet. You can see the little, a little bit of a puddle here. So you want to get it so that it's when it's right at a nice sheen and then you can make some nice surface effects if you wanted to. I'm just going to bring a little bit of this in here because it got a little weak. So on that other one, too, the one I did with the inks I did go over with a uh, permanent um, art marker I think it, oh the sharpie I am only able to use what I have at home here I haven't been down to the studio there's also a pilot high-tech point but this one is not um, this one here is not uh, permanent you want to use a permanent so that when it dries and you go over it it doesn't smear on you yeah, I think these would be fun if I did some patterns on their faces too. But I, I kind of like it. It's fun. I like bright, bright colors. So I guess maybe what I'll do is I'll do the ears just a little bit different. So we got some contrast, but I mean, we'll, we'll stay in that same color and I'll, I'll go all the, I'm not going to do all these, these, um, these patches in those colors. I'm going to go the color behind it. So the whole body is going to be this kind of big variegated. So, but I think what I'm going to do with this is I'll do it a little bit backwards from how I started. So I'm, I haven't gone right to the edge because I this isn't really dry yet and I don't want to run that into my ear. I'm not ready for that yet. But we'll wait till it's partially dry and then we can connect those. Right? Clean that out and then come in with my next color, which will be, I'll come in with Queen Rose. And then we want to touch over where we were, right? Kind of overlap so that those, to encourage those colors to mingle in. Okay, and then we're going to clean that. And then I'm going to come in with that magenta, deep, deep magenta, and just dab that. Well, that kind of completely obliterated the rose. But I'm probably going to have to lift some color from that anyway. Notice I went like this and got rid of most of the water. This is a, um, a number four and, of course, my number eight. So those are the ones I've been using here at home quite a bit. I have other brushes here, but these are really doing the job nice. So there is some bleeding or a little bit of bleeding out from where I wetted it out. So that could just be the, the lack of quality of the paper. Uh, the sizing could have maybe been removed. <clears throat> or I actually went out that far with my water. I wasn't paying attention. And that could be. So notice that I, I kind of touched on uh, edges now to kind of combine those. going to dab the excess. So I'm going to keep that kind of dark up at the top like that. So now we go on to the other ear. So this is kind of semi-dry here now. I, and I turn my paper around quite a bit so I don't have to overreach. Or um, so we want to get it wet or, um, you know, have the possibility of a water droplet go where I don't want it to go. That way if I'm working closely to the area then I have less chance of getting like ink spots on it like I did that one, right? 
you know, I had went across to the water thing and here got two drops of the uh, orange ink. So, hey, well, it happens. And her ear looks like it got a little detached here when I was doing the transfer or when I was initially doing it, maybe. Yeah, this is the original and then I, I took tracing paper and then traced over top of it to make copies. And then I use that to create the um, the other ones. Okay. So it's the Quinn Rose. Really dark. Rich. She's a rich mama. Okay, this is a powerful color here, so we're gonna have to be careful. We don't want it to overpower everything. So that's quite a lot of pigment on there. So I'm gonna move it around a little. When you're working this small, I probably could maybe go with a smaller brush. But I think the number four is such a, see, I'm just picking up some of that. The number four is a very versatile brush size. And the number eight is too. I love the number eight. And I like the Princeton. This is the Princeton uh, long round. And that means it's got this extra long, like you can see it's almost carved and there's not as many um, fibers up there. See, it's like it's carved out in that way so you only just have a few hairs there. And that way you can get some really nice fine lines without switching over your, your brush. You can never have too many brushes. So I went outside the lines on that one too. Doesn't matter, she's just gonna have extra extra large ears. And now her horns I did very short, obviously, because she was close to the top of the page, so I didn't I didn't really So that's looking fun, hey. We can always add some colors after too. Now the opaque's gonna be um it's gonna be very flat color too. Whereas the transparents tend to have almost a glow to them. And as far as the eyes go, well, that's actually should be pinky. Got that eyelid. They have the. They always look like they're half asleep. Okay, so I'm going to take a very. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to use this because of the the um, the point, and I'm going to use that. And I'm not going to do the whole thing because. Doing it in parts ensures a better success and um, consistency in the wetness of the water, of the surface. You can hear the birds singing out there. So hopefully if I can get this done quick enough. I'll just go as, as long as um, I can so it's not too long a video. I might just get her done and just to get help you get started. I find that when I was doing the other one it took me quite a while but I really took my time with it, the one with the inks, because I, w I didn't have a plan on what I wanted to do. And so typically if I don't have a plan, you know, like a color scheme or whatever, because I'm typically a project oriented person, I will sit down and plan out, plan out a painting, you know, if I'm going to do a painting then I plan it. And I think about sometimes I'll do a color study or, but, um, you know, and like with the lilies and the daffodil, I did a few of them. Well, like I did here too. I did a few of them here too, just to get a feel for it. But um, just to be frivolous is a lot of fun. So, but um, like I said, um, just taking my time and thinking about what I wanted to do, what colors and, it, you know, really... Um, wild away, uh, you know, the time, of, and I was just really enjoying it. It was very meditative, but that's what happens when you're in the creative zone anyway. Your brain waves get down to that um, theta level, 
you know, first it's our, it lowers to the alpha and then it goes to the theta. Now I'm not using that opaque, do you notice I'm just using the two here? Okay, so that's the end of that wetness. Actually, that looks like it's more of a wet on dry, doesn't it? So I'm going to come down there with some water and that should draw it out. See how that point is able to get right in the middle, in, be, in those little areas? Right? There's not a lot of space between those patches. Went over the lines. I don't care. <laughs> it's okay. Isn't that fun though, having this variegated look? Ooh, I got too dry, so I gotta add water. a little watered out but we can always go over after too so see that's still wet which is great because now I can still drop some pigment in there and that'll spread out and give it a little bit uh, more to look at too fun. I'll stretch that out there. Now we want to get water and draw it down. So I've been sort of having withdrawals lately of um, these Chinese dramas and I know they're not a real popular name people like to hear right now, especially in light of everything. It's not the people though, it's their government. It's never that. It's always the people who are governing them. This communism is just so far from being right. And I just feel terrible for those people. And then it's, yeah, so it's grateful I live in Canada. It's times like these, but anyway, they make beautiful cinema, cinema. Uh, style movies and even the you know how we'll have a series of something and it'll have 14 episodes well theirs have 60 episodes so of course they always just give you little tidbits and you have to so I uh, typically watch the ones that have already been aired for a couple of years and then they've got some uh, English subtitles <laughs> I don't get much done because I have to sit there and watch the screen so I can listen to the, you know, the, or I can see what the English translation is. So I've wasted a lot of time. So in order to not waste so much, I've binge watched. And most people, most of my friends will tell you, I've actually learned quite a bit of Chinese though. There is an upside to that. I can understand uh, quite a few words. I can't, um, I can't speak it. Well, I mean, obviously, if I've learned a couple words, then I, I know some. 
but I, you know, I suppose that over time, if it's always within and around you, like any language, you're going to pick up all the subtleties and maybe what, I guess, what they call the conversation language. You know, you know enough to have a conversation, but right, to ask simple questions, right? But not the whole language. Yeah, I would love to uh, speak fluent Chinese. But um, their history is crazy. We got to remember our country, as good as it is, it's very young still. When you think about the thousands of years of history and dynasties and rulers and, you know, just... And some of these dramas are all taken from the, you know, the, the Qing dynasty and the... Um, there's what's the Ming the, the Qing is but it's spelled Q-I-N-G I'm probably not saying it right but you get a lot of historical facts and um, crazy crazy um, you'd never wanted to be part of the palace that's for sure it was it, <laughs> they said to Harold they said there's more you know because they were all based on factual events that happened and I said holy moly that there's more there's espionage and drama and lies and deceit everybody constantly was looking over their shoulder to see if somebody was going to throw them under the bus and I mean there wasn't any room either if you if you messed up you're done you're 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 done you're out you're beheaded and, and depending on the crime you could be cut up into a thousand pieces and apparently one of the worst is is that they tie you to a couple of horses and then you you're literally pulled apart by these horses that's one of the one of the uh, death sentences that you get like oh boy this is brutal better off just being a poor pauper in the in the countryside you know don't we don't want to be around the you don't want to be up the ladder and of course the harems they're all killing off each other's children because they could be the next, you know, the next to the throne or whatever. Wowzers. Crown prince. And they, they always called themselves, like, they one uh, emperor could have, like, 20 sons, and they would all be named as crown prince or second brother, third brother. <laughs> That's how they talked to each other. They didn't really, you know, say their names per se. So these two colors here too on here, they're staining colors, right? So um, once they're dry, that's it. You're, you're, there's going to be a hard edge. There's no softening that out. So you want to work fairly click, click, quickly when you're doing this sort of thing. This is funny. I don't know what um, I'm going to do though for the... Uh, the patches if you have some ideas I don't think I'm gonna go with I might go with um, I might go with like this this orange here I think this is uh, new gamboge yeah that's one of my favorite deep warm yellows so that would be quite a contrast against this, um, this very vibrant pink and mauve. So there, I don't know if you can, how well you can see how those colors are. See how they're, I don't know why it's not focusing in. It was doing a pretty good job earlier. My son brought up his camcord or his webcam for me to use. Mine just was, um, a, that last video apparently was terrible. It was just, there was all kinds of shaking going on. And it looked fine to me on the screen as I was videoing. But when I did the upload and playback and I was watching it, it was just, ah. <laughs> and also I said, I don't know how to do the splicing or fixing, you know, or cleaning up or... Um, you know, stopping it at some spots that it doesn't need to be. I guess I'll have to upload some upload some um, software, I guess, to do that. But 
till I learned that. Oh, I guess maybe I'm starting to get tired. I have been up all night. <laughs> okay, so why don't we create... Oh, yeah, we're going to do that new gamboge. Forget what I just said. See, so I'm getting get forgetful sometimes. So and this, is, uh, this is definitely an opaque. So that's going to go down very dark. I'm going to get some more water on this, though. And that's going to be kind of cool, I think, against the... Oh. No, that's not good. Ay! I'm going to come in here. Well, it obviously left a residue. But thank goodness I, got, I went quicker, quick in there, because this was still wet. So it, was, so it bled into it. So what I'm going to do is I'll just fix this up here. And then I'll let that dry a little bit. I'll have the rest of this. So let's go maybe uh, do this. I really want to do that. I think maybe I'm going to get, I got some of this. Um, it is a diox. Uh, you know, I, I always have a hard time pronouncing. It is a Windsor Newton. It's a, it's a Windsor Violet is what it is, but the actual pigment is dioxazine. It's a very um, semi, semi-transparent. But let's go on the inner, inner petal on this. We'll make, make it look like it's a plant of some form. We should, I don't want to do too much variegation on this because then it becomes too busy to look at and your eye doesn't know where it wants to go. And maybe we'll do an inner purple on that one. It's much smaller. But maybe I will drop a little bit of blue in there. I got some blues. I got um, some. I'm out of some of them, like the cerulean. I'm out of. I used that on the uh, the last of that, I believe, on my lily. I did not investigate and see what this was. I remember it was a two, but I went, "Oh yeah, I want that color too." <laughs> I forgot. But anyway, these are the blue. I generally on my palette at the studio, I have far more blues of than I have of any other color. And that's because I like to make my own greens. The possibilities are endless. So I'm just dropping some of the blue in here. But you know what I'm going to do, though? I think I am going to come in here with this Windsor yellow. No, this is the Daniel Smith. Um, this is Daniel Smith's uh, primary. It's used as a primary, but it's Hansa Yellow Medium. That's Hansa Yellow Light. So there's the Hansa Yellow Medium right there. And that's PY97, I believe. PY97. Yeah, they should have it on the sides. Yeah, that's what I go by. Yep, PY97. So let's paint the center of this. Yeah, nice bright yellow, which is a complement of that purple too. And let's do, we'll just do a little line. We'll do a little line there. So make, we'll make all of them with little. This one looks more like an avocado, right? My water's dirty from that red. Okay, now maybe. Hmm. Well, I, I do think I will go with a light green outer. You know, a nice bright green. So I'll put some yellow there. Clean out my brush. And I'm going to go with this really cool blue. 
a little bit more green than I want. I want it light, light, light. There we go. More like a neon. Very bright. Okay. So, hmm. I'm going to go outside of this one first. Because that purple could still be wet. Oh, we forgot this one. It's hidden in the... This will be good because we can paint this out nice and bright. And that will pop out against her. Because it's a complement to the, the reds. So this magenta... And the rose... Love that green. And so I bet you, I wonder, I should grab the um, whole bean leaf green, which is my absolute favorite green. It's the only one that I've never, um, it's the only green I've purchased ever. Ooh. Well, no, that's not true. I, I apologize. I just lied. I, I bought a hooker's green years ago because when I was still a student at it, oh, gosh, a long time ago, hookers was the green. Everybody said, oh, yeah, you got to have a hookers green. And um, I was always told by a, a mentor of mine that I, I did a workshop with many years ago. Do you see how it bled in there? Yeah, it wasn't dry. I had a puddle. So that's what I was saying. Anyway, um, she had said that hooker screen was a cheaters that we should learn our colors and learn to create our own colors we have far more variety so i'm i'm up i'm i was always up for that it was always nice to create my own greens and then i met leaf green from whole bean i actually wonder if i've got it in my little container here and i'll show you i have a bunch of tubes that i brought home <laughs> I brought a few tubes home and then I've got a whole bunch over here but you know since I've kind of relaxed quite a bit with using greens I've actually purchased um, a Daniel Smith the Perlene green deep um, what is it deep sea or underwater green I think it's called um, underwater green ah there it is there. I don't know if you can see it okay. It is the whole bean leaf green. And I don't even know if they put their pigments in. My eyes are so bad. But I'm gonna I'm gonna give this a try. Let's see what they are side by side. Look at that. It's just a slightly lighter than the color I made. Gorgeous. I will use this for the one, the other one. See, it's a really, really super yellow green. And it's just so vibrant. You know those brand new shoots of spring? That's what color they are. Let's, um, let's paint these. Because he just tore off the new shoots. It's just like fresh veggies for these guys. So we've got a fresh, fresh chew. And we interrupted. That's why they're looking at us like, what? What did you come into my world to do? So there we go. So it looks almost more like a yellow. However, if you see it up close, um, it is a green. I'm going to mix these two together. Now i got a nice happy medium. But I don't know where I'm going to put it. So maybe I'll put the, I'll do these. Might as well. Ah, uh, you know, well, yeah. I can always go over top of these. See, I'm just going to put dots. And just let that dry as a hard dot. Because it's semi-opaque anyway. See that? I'm just going to do the lines. 
just draw a line down and that way what I'll do is I'll come over top with a funky color so I'll make some definitions here but I hope you're having fun did you try the lilies or the or the daffodil daffodils harder I found that uh, daffodils are hard to paint and especially you know to to do them frivolously and loose I don't think well I mean representations is always good though if somebody can look at your painting and know that it's a daffodil then you've succeeded because you don't like I've always told people if you want it to look photorealistic just take a picture you know why would you want to but see the challenge of for many artists is to get it to look uh, photorealistic um, that's the challenge in their you know the professional okay I'm gonna go over this again because it's very uneven I don't know I'm picking up dust everywhere here little stringers my hair is tied back I don't have my hair in front of my face okay so that did get I gotta lift that out so get a thirsty brush clean it off I don't know, is anybody else dealing with little tiny, these tiny, the tiniest ants I've ever seen in my entire life? We have been plagued with them now for over two summers. We hadn't seen them all winter. We thought that maybe we finally got them out of here. And now, all the way up here in the spare room on the second floor, I, I should have showed you. It's the tiniest little thing. Like, I've never seen ants that small. And they're not sugar ants. Somebody said, oh, they must be sugar ants. Well, they're not. They're not sugar ants. They're actually carnivorous because there's some of the cat food. When I go down and I go back to clean the dish, it's full of these little ants that have come in to, for the kill for the rest of it. Okay, so I'm just going to go over that again. And... All right. I can always add something later to Okay, I got all this green and nowhere to go. Well, we'll just leave it then. Notice I'm mixing right on here. These will stain, but I've got a Mr. Clean um, that I use. So, let's give it a whirl now. traffic I guess these are the essentials going to work getting tired now that's my body saying I gotta go to bed and I can't stay up too late because I got my little daisy do I got to take out for her morning walk I took her out tonight though before I sat down here to do this so She'll be good. She is such a good dog. Oh my gosh, she's so good. We, uh, for those who don't know me here, we took in a rescue, um, pseudo rescue, because she did belong to a family member. And I took her away because she was not in good shape. She wasn't being cared for properly. So I took her. And we've had her. F Oh gosh, five months now. And she's an older girl. And I thought, I want to make the rest of you know, her final days at least full of love. And so we actually got her off this crappy food. Got her on a wheat free, all raw. She, well, that was a slow go though, right? We, we had to do that carefully. Doesn't that look fun? It almost looks a little bit, um, if you see it. See, I don't know why is that not focusing very well. Hmm. I wonder if I went a little darker. Is that better? Okay. I don't have a zoom feature on this. It's just a webcam. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go down 
to the um, very bottom of this I'm going to finish off these patches and then I'm going to sign off. I can call it a part one and a part two because it's getting into 50 minutes already. Holy moly. Well, it's nice hanging out. Let me see. I forgot a little wiggly area. rumbling so it was a gorgeous day definitely got out in that there's a lot of people that were outside today the streets are very busy people are just they were uh, so much shining so they didn't care if they were not like they were gonna go out and meet anybody they just needed to get out so hop in their vehicle I know you're waiting for me to pull out the metallics, aren't you? Guess what? We're going to have to wait till part two. <laughs> I'm being so mean. But man, oh man, that's going to be fun. Maybe I'll actually do a metallic over top of this. The uh, orangey yellow patches here. Hmm. I'll have to see. So you see it's not big, I'm, it's not what I'm used to, this is more of a detailed style of painting. And uh, I've been painting very loosely for a while now, which is wonderful. But this week, it's been kind of a cross between a loosey-goosey and some detail. And uh, I don't want to get trapped in that again, I'd, pr I'd much rather go back to the loose very loose and free flow of um so i am debating whether to outline these in the end or just leave them as is we'll see <laughs> looks like she's got a different head than the body eh? so what i'll do is i'll actually take some of that warmer Sorry, I don't. I probably don't sound very professional. <laughs> I just thought I would do these videos up to just so that we can share some time together. Um, if I ever do any, well, you know what? I'm. At, I'd rather just stay real. I mean, just keep these very informal and very real. See, no, notice how I'm just kind of coming through and. Um, adding there's a couple wet spots but the, I'm kind of dragging this through just so I could get some of that uh, or opaque red in there right eh? I don't want to touch the orange though you don't want that to smear the opaque is strong and it's drying quickly Softening it up a bit. Kind of 
piece and I forgot. Okay, folks, it has been 55 minutes. So I think I'll sign off for now, otherwise it's just too long, and we'll go with a part two. Okay, so see you in a little bit.